Anybody seen one of my machine strike pieces around? Why don't you check the cash? Maybe you left it there when you dropped off all that ale. Oh. Hope it didn't get stained. experience in Thebes was unsettling, but we have a new problem. Did something go wrong with Beta and the rig? Will we be able to transport you to Gemini? The rig is complete. The problem is Hephaestus itself. It has accelerated its proliferation throughout the Cauldron Network, increasing its power. But with your sub-functions restored, we can still succeed, right? Correct. But the net effect is that absorbing Hephaestus will take longer than previously calculated. How long? Even with Omega clearance, my current estimate is that the merge will take 35 hours. And each hour increases the risk of detection by the Zeniths. Two cores. Two overrides. What if the merge were carried out by two clones of Elizabeth Sobek, both armed with Omega Clearance? How long then? Half the time? Hephaestus would be unprepared for the simultaneous labor of two operators, in addition to obvious synergetic efficiencies. Calculating. It would reduce the merge time to approximately 4.5 hours. Okay. Varl, it looks like we're gonna need Beta at Gemini. Do you think you can convince her? Uh, I don't know, but I'll try. What about our diversion? Are the pulse generators ready? Only a final test remains. I am confident that if fired in proximity to other cauldrons, the pulses will mask our activities at Gemini from the Zeniths. Good. As long as Aaron can operate one without shooting himself in the face. Aloy. You better get down here. Beta's in bad shape. Okay. Aloy. I tried, but it's impossible. I don't think anything will convince her to go. We don't have a choice. Good luck. Beta, you have to come with us. It's the only way. It's one mission. The most important one, we need you. Tell me why you won't go. What if they... What if they take me back, alone, in a cell again? A slave. Forever. The only way we can end the risk of that happening is by stopping the Zeniths for good. And in order to do that, we have to get Hephaestus. The Zeniths are a threat to everyone, Beta, not just you. So find your courage. That's easy for you to say. You still have no idea what they're capable of. I told you from the beginning, we'll never beat them. It's hopeless. Beta. Leave me alone! You don't understand! You're right. I don't understand. We have the same genes, the same mind, the same heart. So why can't you find the strength to do what has to be done? Like Elizabeth would. Don't you think I've thought about that? I don't know what piece of Elizabeth I'm missing. 
I don't know what you have that I don't. I look through all the data from your focus. You were raised as an outcast, shunned, and isolated just like me, so what's the difference? What's my defect? you, trained you, but he was never warm or loving. The day he died, the day he gave you that charm, he was going to abandon you. He wanted me to embrace the tribe. But then he gave his life for mine. He loved me in his own way. And that was enough. What did he feel like? It was like having a strength that was always there. It's still there. Even now I hear him in my head when things get bad. But it looks impossible. Look deeper. And then fight like you can win. You don't have to go on the mission. We'll find another way. I'll go. You're right. I'll only be safe from them when we succeed. But you have to promise me one thing. Yes, of course. If it goes bad, if the Zeniths find us, I don't want to be their slave again. Do you understand? Okay. Promise? I promise. I could use as much time as you can give me to study up on the merge, to make it as efficient as possible. I'll be ready when you are. I swear. Aloy, whenever you are ready, come speak to me and I'll ask the others to make final preparations for the mission. Hello again, Aloy. Hello, Aloy. Hey, Gaia. So, uh, me and Beta, I guess you heard what happened. Yes. I am continuously impressed by the complexity of human relationships. Despite the unpleasant circumstances that led to your quarrel, I am pleased to see you have both found an agreeable resolution. Well, two heads are better than one, right? Yes, I believe so. Are you ready to depart for Cauldron Gemini? Or we can continue our conversation, if you like. So... 
about Beta. I never really saw the difference between us until now. She's been through so much, completely alone. You have both endured many hardships, different in almost every respect, yet equally remarkable. I like to think of you as two miracles, born of Elizabeth Sobeck. Three, then. Let's not forget about you, Gaia. How was all of us settling in? As soon as she arrived, Alva was eager to study the data in the Archive. A particular file soon caught her attention. Information about a machine assistant devoted to keeping living spaces neat and orderly. I informed her that once I am empowered with the abilities of Hephaestus, I may be able to design such a machine. I'm sure she'll like that. When I set out to find a way to bring you back, I never thought we'd be here, like this. Among friends. They have all come a long way with their improvised educations. Varl has suggested that one day we might extend this model to more tribal inhabitants, once the biosphere has been stabilized. Yeah, that's not such a bad idea. As long as you're the one running the lessons. So our plan to capture Hephaestus, let's go over it again. As you wish. Thanks to Beta's test, we now know that Hephaestus will not respond to your Alpha clearance. Which is why I got Ted Pharaoh's Omega clearance. Correct. While you were gone, Beta constructed the transport rig and pulse generators. When we get to Gemini, I will need to be installed on one of the facility's cores. The second core is for Hephaestus. Using Omega clearance will allow you to trap it. And then you'll be able to absorb it? Not quite. You will need to manually remove Hephaestus's malicious code before the merge. How long will that take? Because the work will be split between you and Beta, it will take approximately 4.5 hours. And during that time, the others will create a distraction for us using the pulse generators, right? Correct. They will each take position at a cauldron door and fire off their device. The energy surge should mask our activities until the merge is complete. And then we'll have everything we need to defeat the Zenus. Sounds like a plan. So I guess this room was meant to keep an eye on conditions outside? Yes. From here, the facility's operators would have been able to observe weather and machine activity in real time. It may be possible to restore more of this room's functionality, should you find and reconnect additional camera feeds. I'll keep a lookout. So what will happen to this place, while we're at Gemini? All systems within this facility will continue to operate. As Minerva will no longer be masking this location, the facility will be exposed to detection. Though without my presence, it is unlikely to attract attention. Let's hope so. When we were at the facility where we found Beta, there were records that said Far Zenith were researching embryogenesis. I know they traded their ectogenic chambers to Zero Dawn, but why were they researching it in the first place? At this point, we can only speculate. Perhaps at one time they meant the Odyssey to be a colony ship, necessitating such technology. As their goals evolved over time, so did their areas of research. So they got more selfish as the risks of staying on Earth kept rising. So I, uh, found Thebes. What do you think Ted would have done if his life extension treatments had worked? 
It seems he convinced himself it was his duty to guide future humans. Given the tribal nature of new humans, and his ability to use Omega clearance on the terraforming system, I imagine he would have convinced one or more tribes to worship him as their patriarchal deity. Okay. Yep, glad that didn't happen. Aside from Gaia Prime and Thebes, there was one other underground facility that was sealed before the Pharaoh Plague reached it. Elysium. The place where Zero Dawn staff and their families went to live out their lives. Do you know what happened to it? Elysium was designed to provide life support for 100 years. My data indicates the facility went offline well before then. Did the Pharaoh Plague find them? Unknown. My connection to the facility was abruptly severed. Gaia? What was Elizabeth like? Her presence is interwoven with my memories. The moment I came online, she was there. We exchanged greetings, names, then set to our task. It was the first of many conversations. I enjoyed being in her company, listening to her stories. She was my creator, my guide. Your friend? Yes. When I reviewed the data on your focus, I was saddened to learn of her fate. Though I am glad she made it home. I deeply wish she did not have to be alone. She was okay with that. She gave all of herself. Did all that she could. Thanks, guys. Beta believes the Zeniths want to use the terraforming system to wipe out life on Earth. Start over. So they can build it how they want. Further supporting our hypothesis. But why? Given their technology, they could wipe out the tribes of the world by easier means. And if they're the same people who left Earth a thousand years ago, wouldn't they want the biosphere to be as it was? It is likely they adjusted to different planetary conditions in their colony on Sirius. They may be trying to recreate that environment here. Turning Earth into a new Sirius. Their own personal playground. So the Zeniths are the same people who left Earth. Physically immortal. How'd they figure it out? From what we know of Far Zenith, it is plausible that prominent geneticists and engineers were offered a place aboard the Odyssey in exchange for their expertise. Given enough time, technology, and resources, any challenge can be overcome. Like how Minerva eventually generated the deactivation codes for the Pharaoh Plague. Exactly. Ted was trying to make himself immortal. Didn't end well for him. For every success, there are many more failed attempts. Some more grotesque than others. The Zeniths. Gerard, Eric, Tilda, Verbena. Beta said they were some of the most powerful people on Earth. I think Elizabeth knew one of them. Tilda. Did she ever mention her to you? No. Elizabeth often spoke of her work, or told stories of her mother and her childhood. If she knew this Tilda, she did not disclose it with me. What we can conclude from your and Beta's experiences is that the Zeniths are ruthless in pursuit of their goal. To protect life on Earth, they must be stopped. 
So from what Beta told me, I guess we can assume the Zenith's technology is powerful in all sorts of ways, right? Yes. As your encounters with them amply demonstrate, they appear to make extensive use of robotic servitors. Further, they seem to be equipped with some kind of protective energy field that shields them from harm. They seemed indestructible, but that weapon the Rebels used stripped their shield somehow. Throughout history, every defensive technology has eventually been defeated by an offensive counterpart. While we lack the anti-shielding weapon, were I to absorb Hephaestus and utilize it to create a large force of combat machines, no shielding could withstand such an assault indefinitely. So there's hope. Always. The extinction signal didn't just wake Hades. It made every subordinate function self-aware. Why? I have wondered this myself. So far as I can tell, Hades was the sole target, and the partial sentience imparted to other subordinate functions was incidental. A signal that precise would require thorough knowledge of the system. How could the Zeniths know that? From the records on your focus, it appears Far Zenith had an informant during the development of Zero Dawn. Hank Shaw. He was supposed to steal a copy of the system for Far Zenith, but Elizabeth and Travis Tate caught him first. Yes. It is likely Far Zenith acquired knowledge on the system's design through him, despite his failure. There's something I'm still trying to figure out. Why was Demeter using flying machines to distribute metal flowers? In its deranged state, Demeter was defending itself against a robotic swarm that would devour all plant life. It thought the Pharaoh Plague was still happening? It feared it would come again. As part of its directive of receding Earth's vegetation, it sought to protect plant life at all costs. And considering it had 20 years to proliferate, I expect you will continue to find the fruits of its efforts for some time. It's a good thing I have the code to dissolve the vines, then. Why did Aether take up residence in an ancient war museum? As with the other subordinate functions, Aether needed to install itself on a processor with adequate storage and power. One in the museum appears to have been sufficient, given that the holographic displays were still active. So Aether was assured it could stay for as long as it needed to. Correct. Though it is curious that it chose a place surrounded with the ancient ruins of aircraft. Maybe it also felt at home there. So Poseidon spent the last 20 years hiding out in Las Vegas. From the data I found, it seems the city had an advanced water reclamation system. Is that why Poseidon went there? Most likely. In an effort to protect itself, Poseidon sought out a safe harbor where it could access water supply functions. There, buried and encased in a protective dome, it could guard against any threats. Like three Osirum showmen? I suspect that was not the first time it felt the need to repel trespassers. See you later, Gaia. Until next time, Aloy. Pizza? Apparently it tastes worse the longer it takes to be delivered. Or something like that. And maybe you can find the recipe? I think it was just All right. Bread. Gotta focus. Aloy! Right to work, I see. There's just so much. I mean, we knew of artificial beings that served the ancestors, but Gaia? Oh, she's amazing! 
A and you, a true reincarnation of an ancestor. Genetically speaking, of course, not like the um, late CEO. And there's more ancestors out there, returned from beyond the stars. Of course, they're trying to kill us, which is not great. And Eric Visser is with them, which is disturbing. And then there's Hephaestus, and... Okay, okay. How about we take it one step at a time? You're right. I also owe you an explanation for everything that happened at Landfall. Oh, and... Uh, if you have a moment, there's something I could use your help with. I see you've been using your new focus. It's been fascinating. So much better than the version the Quen have. What would have taken me years to sort through, like the database you helped me recover? With this, I've been able to establish search parameters to speed up the process. This could revolutionize how diviners analyze the legacy. That is, whatever part of it the overseers would actually let us study. You want data, you'll find lots of it here. A diviner has never had this sort of unsupervised access to archives such as this. And knowing you, I suspect there is much that would normally be forbidden held within them. But I was sent here to help you. I would be remiss to ignore any truth laid before me. Maybe it'll help the Quen find their way back to the path of truth. Any more data catch your eye? All of it. I have so much to study up on. Years, actually. I'm particularly interested in the Odyssey. We knew the ancestors had made it to the moon. In fact, we theorized some of them had settled on it. But Sirius is way farther than that. And we thought journeying across the ocean would be the feat of a lifetime. The sheer calculations needed for space travel, it's overwhelming to think about. Even so, the Quen are way ahead of other tribes when it comes to understanding this stuff. Where I grew up, everyone thought that stars were sparks that rose from a fire lit by the goddess to guide us through the night. I imagine you don't know anyone here that well yet, but they're a good group. It's funny because one of your friends is, well, another you. Not that you are the same person at all. I mean, you are, as in you're both genetically Elizabeth Sobeck, but even so, you're different. We grew up very differently, but sometimes different is good. Yes, of course. I hope everyone's been treating you okay. Oh, yeah, of course. They've all been extremely welcoming. And they share the knowledge they learn on their focuses with each other freely. It's refreshing. Back home, diviners can only share data with the permission from the overseers. Sounds restrictive and stifling. Yeah, you are not wrong. Have you spoken with Zoe at all? A little bit, but uh, I did hear her singing with Varl not too long ago. I don't think they noticed. So seemed so uh, free when she did it. Like every emotion she had was taking flight in song. Uh, and she looked happier because of it. Uh, I felt so dull and nervous in comparison. You should ask so to teach you sometime about Utara music. Maybe. If you need anything before heading out to the cauldrons... You have nothing to worry about. Gaia's explained your plan in detail, as expected from such an efficient AI. I've even received some very, um, uh, succinct combat advice from Kotalo. You know, uh, in case the Zeniths show up. What kind of advice? He, um, told me to run. For now. We'll even the odds soon enough.
Back at the greenhouse, you spoke of knowledge forbidden to your people. Diviners are meant to seek out the truth in the legacy. And many Imperials sponsor them in the hopes they'll find something the Empire can put to use, thus gaining favor with the Emperor. But the Board of Overseers claims certain truths are detrimental to the stability of the Empire, like discovering one of our revered ancestors ended the world. That is why Diviners are only allowed to access segments of the Legacy. Only Overseers can view it all. It ensures that any heretical data can be contained and retrieved before it can spread. What happens to Diviners who break the rules? I never had the courage to ask. You said you owed me an explanation for what happened in Thebes. I'm listening. Right. I'll start at the beginning, with the CEO. He was an Imperial, the Emperor's nephew, in fact. As such, he sponsored many Diviners to search the Legacy for anything that might help the tribe, and himself. He took a special interest in anything related to Ted Farrow, whom we consider the greatest of the Ancestors. Ted Farrow, revered ancestor. That's tough to take. I know better now, of course. Anyway, the Diviners discovered that Farrow spent a great deal of time in San Francisco. In fact, many of the most important ancestors did. So the Emperor's nephew convinced him that an expedition across the ocean might solve our most pressing problems. If only we could find the right data in this fabled city. Perhaps we could roll back the floods and storms that threatened our people. The Emperor declared that all the tribe's resources be poured into this endeavor. Dozens of ships were built, scouting missions were dispatched, and the Emperor's nephew was named Sio, one who wields the legacy for the good of the Empire. The living embodiment of Ted Pharaoh, a renewer. It may seem strange now, but for a time, he carried all of our hopes. We really believed he would save us. We had no idea just how perilous the journey would be. You said the expedition across the sea was more dangerous than you thought it would be. What happened? We lost most of our ships to hurricanes, and scores of soldiers perished to hunger and disease. And that was before we even hit the coast. Once we landed, machines ripped our patrols apart, and we struggled to replenish our rations. There were bright spots, to be sure. We found Thebes and the greenhouse, but nothing improved the CEO's mood as his dreams of saving the tribe were slowly dashed. He became more and more obsessed with Thebes and what lay behind its door, and more and more convinced that the title of CEO was no mere honorific. You heard him spouting nonsense about Pharaoh's essence and some kind of becoming. We knew these weren't the words of a sane man, but he was quick to put any who spoke out in front of a firing squad. What a great guy. The Gwen are wrong about many things when it comes to the legacy. I can see that now. But what the CO became was a complete perversion of what principal diviners stand for. The pursuit of truth. Uh. I'm sorry you had to endure his madness. I'm just glad it's over. For everyone. So, Bohai, your overseer, will he run things better than Sio? He won't execute people on a whim, if that's what you mean. But he's hardly a paragon of integrity. I can't tell you how many times he took credit for data in the legacy that I uncovered. The best thing I can say about him is that he can be trusted to always do what's best for him. Yep, sounds about right. The Ancestors, is that what your people call the Old Ones? Yes and no. The Ancestors are the greatest of the Old Ones. Those whose legacy taught us agriculture, medicine, warfare, leadership, and patronage of the science and arts. The CEO called Elizabeth Sobek an assistant. What's that about? Right. Well, any old one who has made minor contributions or worked extensively under one of the ancestors is called an assistant. 
That's how we thought of Sobek. Until we met you. Our limited access to data past the late 2040s has obviously uh, misinformed our view of the past. You mentioned the reason you came here was to help your family. Your sister... Her name is Alika. Our parents are commoners. Peasants, really. When I passed the divination exams, they were so proud. It brought honor to our family and increased rations. Only Alika begged me not to leave for the research academy. Why? What happens there? Alika knew that once you enter, you're not allowed to leave or see anyone. Not even your family. Uh, unless you can get special permission and an escort by an overseer. That sounds harsh. Like the focuses we keep, diviners are few in number, and the Empire is... Well, fearful that outsiders will try to steal our knowledge. Last time I was allowed to see my family was just before our voyage here. Because of my position, I was able to get them refuge from the floods within the capital. But if our crops don't recover soon, they'll starve to death along with everyone else. I promise I'll do my best to make sure it doesn't come to that. You mentioned Eric Visser? How do you know about him? The Zenith who tried to kill you? He is known to the Quen as the Protector. Combing through data related to his work led us to breakthroughs related to weapons and military tactics. Knowledge our rulers use to conquer and expand. To become the Empire we are today. That's why he's one of our most revered ancestors. But, based on your encounter with him, it appears he's even more ruthless than we ever imagined. Yet another distorted interpretation in the legacy. Well, at least you're piecing together the truth. If only the overseers back home would do the same. Beta mentioned other Zeniths. Tilda, Verbena, and Gerard. I'm afraid I don't know anything about them. Whatever legacy they left behind, the Diviners haven't recovered. Must be strange to think that some of the ancestors your tribe reveres are still alive. And here on Earth, right now. Yeah, it is. Part of me is curious to know who else besides Eric Visser might be among them. Maybe Nikita Arand? We call her the Spark. The legacy tells us she brought unlimited energy to the Old Ones. Or Song Zhao, whom we call the Healer. It is said she found new ways to extend the ancestors' lifespans. But my curiosity fades when I think of how different our view of Visser was compared to the reality that you experienced. Perhaps it is better not to know. You mentioned there was something you needed help with? Yes. Uh, so, as I was sifting through data from the greenhouse, I found references to an old world system back in the Great Delta. It's called Leviathan. My people discovered it decades ago. A sprawling network of river gates and a labyrinth of underground tunnels. The legacy revealed that the old ones used it to control flooding. But we've never gotten it to work. The whole thing is shut down. But, the data from the greenhouse mentions the research facility where Leviathan was created. It's in San Francisco. Another Pharaoh facility? No. Leviathan was a project by Eileen Sasaki. Another ancestor. So, the legacy tells us, anyway. If we can acquire that data, we might be able to fix the system back in the Great Delta. Every year, my sister gets terrified when the long rains begin. With Leviathan, Maybe she won't have to be. Okay. So, where in San Francisco is this facility? That's the thing. The data doesn't say where, exactly. But one of our diviners has been exploring the ruins. He might know. Would you come with me? I have a feeling that wherever this facility is... Well, you're much better at fighting machines than I am. Of course. I'll let you know when I'm in landfall. Thank you, Aloy. I should go. Of course. Before you do, 
Is everything all right? It sounded like there was an uh, issue with Beta and the mission. Not anymore. We just needed to talk some things through. To understand one another is to embrace truth. And like I said, I'll let you know when I'm in landfall. We'll find the data you're after. I appreciate it. Hey, we'll be going after Hephaestus soon. You good with the plan? I've already got the location of my assigned cauldron. Good. I heard you and Beta had a... talk. News travels fast. It wasn't exactly a quiet conversation. There were just things that needed to be said. A healthy crop to those who clear the weeds between them, as the Utaru say. You look like you have something on your mind. We're going to war soon. And war is something I promised myself I'd left behind in the Red Raids. But the more of your data I go through, every voice I hear, every word I read from our ancient past, it makes me realize just how much life was given so that ours could flourish. Fighting for that gift, it's our responsibility. If we fail, it was all for naught. Helps to know you're not alone. For a moment there, you sounded like Varl. I don't know what you're talking about. Read anything interesting lately? I found out the Old Ones use leaf infusions like the Utaru do. Tea, they call it. Apparently it helped soothe them. That and some sort of scented wax they used to cleanse their aura. Uh, plus something called bubble baths. Me, I think I'll stick to singing to calm the nerves. Varl looks pretty focused. He's been obsessing over the data revealed to us by Poseidon. Just the other day we read about mountains hiding deep underwater that spew fire. If I understand correctly, Gaia said the flames they release come from the very center of the Earth. Like a heart, beating with the life of the world. As always, the cycle can be found in even the most unlikely of places. Of course, Varl's mostly interested in watching explosions happen underwater. I assume you've been looking into Demeter now that Gaia's merged with it? Yes. It's been humbling to know that the seeds I carry in this pouch came in turn from the seeds saved for Demeter in the old world. It gives me hope that the cycle of life will prevail now just as it did before. Have you met our new Quen guest yet? I could barely keep up as she gave herself a tour of the base. Varl gave her a new focus. Though, when he told her she was free to access all the data we have here, she turned so pale I thought she'd faint on the spot. We showed her to the archive room so she could see for herself. She hasn't left the place since. That sounds like Alva. How are things with everyone? Slightly quieter. Aaron's been busy scouring data on his newest obsession. Apparently the old ones wrestled machines as some kind of performance. Called it Metal versus Meat. A must-see battle between steel and flesh, as Aaron likes to put it. You'd think we have enough of that going around as it is. I should go. As soon as you intend to leave for Gemini, you'll hear about it. Aloy, everything okay with you and Beta? It sounded like you guys had a, uh, lively conversation. We just had a lot to talk about. Does this mean she's coming with us to Gemini? It does. I hope you're ready to rein in the most stubborn AI of all time. 
That's what all this was for, wasn't it? Hephaestus won't go down quietly. Hephaestus is just a program that's lost its way. We are fighting for our survival. I can always call upon the goddess if you're nervous. Funny. Any last findings you want to share before leaving? Not really. Though I've reached a decision. Oh? When we put Gaia together, I want to return to the Nora. Spread what I've learned. You think they'll listen to you? In time, I believe so. If anyone can make it happen, it's you, Varl. Once Gaia is back up and running, I expect you to put all your training to good use. The seeds have been planted. All they need is a chance to bloom. What? I thought that was pretty good. Zoe liked it. I'm glad you and Zoe found each other. Don't forget, you're to blame for that. What will you and Zoe do if you go back to the Embrace? I hope she'll come with me, at least for a while. And I'll go with her to Plainsong, too. She'll probably want to talk to her people about all this as well. We'll figure it out. I know you will. How does everyone seem to you? Anxious, but ready. I heard Catalo ask for Alva's help with his pulse generator. And I know he's been helping her with a few fighting techniques. Just in case. I hope they aren't needed. Like I said, just in case. I hope firing off those pulse generators will be enough to distract the Zeniths. It'll work. It has to. Always optimistic, huh? Nah, just stubborn. It's a good quality to have when dealing with you. Yeah, right. You were right, you know, about keeping Rost's memories buried. I guess part of me thought he was holding me back, because he wanted me to be a Nora. But the truth is, he gave me a lot. And I took him for granted. He was a good man. He raised you well. I'm glad you're coming with me, Varl. Sure there's no urge to run off alone in there somewhere? No more running. Hey, I thought I'd check in before leaving for Gemini. Are you sure we shouldn't be checking up on you? Whatever went on between you and Beta sounded intense. Not that I'm judging. <laughs> Forge knows all the screws flew loose every time Mercer and I fought. I think we'll be fine from now on. I'm glad to hear it. You look tired. Ha! You're never one to hold back, are you? I've just been making sure that I got everything down for this mission of yours. I wouldn't want to be the usual screw-up out there. You'll do fine, Errant. After we get Hephaestus, we'll be taking the fight to the Zeniths. So... No more reading. Ah, it wasn't that bad. Not really. Besides, uh, going through all that data... ...helped me realize something. You know, the soldiers, the, the ones that fought the Pharaoh machines... ...so Gaia could be built? Uh, they were fighting a battle that couldn't be won. Not with all the weapons in the world. I think most of them realized that, whether anyone said it or not. And they still did it, though. They bought time for all the eggheads working to save the future. Our future. As long as I can do that for you, I'll consider myself a success. Thank you, Errant. I'm glad you're with me. Okay, enough. I'm gonna get emotional. Have you spoken with Alva yet? Yeah, when she's not reading the archives like a giddy kid drinking her first ale. She took to that new focus quick, that's for sure. I gotta say, I'm a little jealous. But I can see why you two hit it off. Anybody take you up on that ale you brought yet? Zoe can't stand the smell of it. I tried Alva, but I don't think she knows what taking a break means. And I'm not putting Varl anywhere near that stuff after that victory party in Meridian. 
What about Catalo? Ah, now there's a man that can hold his liquor. Pretty sure we downed half a keg. We had a good chat, I think. I should go. That same here. I got a date with a cauldron to prepare for. Aloy, are you well? Had a bit of an issue with Beta. It's better now, though. Ah. Uh. I'm not surprised. Really? Why not? I once knew a warrior who discovered he had a brother late in life. It was deeply uncomfortable for him. Did he ever get over it? In time. But not before the two siblings nearly killed each other in a single combat challenge. Ah. Well, at least I avoided that. Were you able to finish the new arm Gaia was helping you with? Indeed. I was hoping we could discuss it. If you have a moment. How are your studies going? I wanted to learn more about the world of the Old Ones. And? I looked up this pharaoh Gaia said you went looking for, and learned about the plague of machines he unleashed. To think that the ancient world was wiped out by... <laughs> a mistake. A single miscalculation. There is no glory or honor in such a fate. Only hubris and pointless death that about sums it up think you're ready to put all your training to the test I am to knock I am always ready have you spoken with Alva the Quinn is peculiar nothing like a Tanakh. her mind is sharp that much is certain but it's hard to imagine her surviving in the wilds. Trust me, she's tougher than she looks. I will take your word for it. Are you nervous about the mission ahead? If I live, it will be in victory. If I die, it will be in battle. What matters most is that you achieve your objective. I'll do my best. You wanted to talk about your arm? Indeed. It's time to test it, and I want you to be there. Okay. How are we doing this? Not how. Where. Will you meet me where we felled Regala's tremor tusk? Right where the river bends? Sure, if you want, but I'm not sure I understand. You'll see when we get there. I promise. Then I'll let you know when I get close. You have my thanks, Aloy. I should go get ready. I await your orders. Like I said, I'll call you when I'm close to Regala's old outpost near the bulwark. May the Ten guide your way 